Chapter 65 The Third Message Closed I was pointed down to the time when the third angel's message was closing. The power of God had rested upon His people. They had accomplished their work and were prepared for the trying hour before them. They had received the latter rain, or refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and the living testimony had been revived. The last great warning had sounded everywhere, and it had stirred up and enraged the inhabitants of the earth who would not receive the message. I saw angels hurrying to and fro in heaven. An angel with a writer's inkhorn by his side returned from the earth and reported to Jesus that his work was done, and the saints were numbered and sealed. Then I saw Jesus, who had been ministering before the ark containing the Ten Commandments, throw down the censer. He raised his hands, and with a loud voice said, It is done. And all the angelic host laid off their crowns as Jesus made the solemn declaration, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Every case had been decided for life or death. While Jesus had been ministering in the sanctuary, the judgment had been going on for the righteous dead, and then for the righteous living. Christ had received his kingdom, having made the atonement for his people and blotted out their sins. The subjects of the kingdom were made up. The marriage of the Lamb was consummated and the kingdom and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven was given to Jesus and the heirs of salvation, and Jesus was to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. As Jesus moved out of the most holy place, I heard the tinkling of the bells upon his garment, and as he left, a cloud of darkness covered the inhabitants of the earth. There was then no mediator between guilty man and an offended God." While Jesus had been standing between God and guilty man, a restraint was upon the people. But when he stepped out from between man and the Father, the restraint was removed, and Satan had entire control of the finally impenitent. It was impossible for the plagues to be poured out while Jesus officiated in the sanctuary. But as his work there is finished and his intercession closes, there is nothing to stay the wrath of God, and it breaks with fury upon the shelterless head of the guilty sinner who has slighted salvation and hated reproof. In that fearful time, after the close of Jesus' mediation, the saints were living in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. Every case was decided, every jewel numbered. Jesus tarried a moment in the outer apartment of the heavenly sanctuary, and the sins which had been confessed while he was in the most holy place were placed upon Satan, the originator of sin, who must suffer their punishment. Then I saw Jesus lay off his priestly attire and clothe himself with his most kingly robes. Upon his head were many crowns, a crown within a crown. Surrounded by the angelic host, he left heaven. The plagues were falling upon the inhabitants of the earth. Some were denouncing God and cursing Him. Others rushed to the people of God and begged to be taught how they might escape His judgments. But the saints had nothing for them. The sweet voice of mercy was no more to invite them. When the saints and all heaven were interested for their salvation, they had no interest for themselves. Life and death had been set before them. Many desired life but made no effort to obtain it. They did not choose life, and now there was no atoning blood to cleanse the guilty, no compassionate Savior to plead for them, and cry, Spare, spare the sinner a little longer. All heaven had united with Jesus as they heard the fearful words, It is done. It is finished. The plan of salvation had been accomplished, but few had chosen to accept it. And as mercy's sweet voice died away, fear and horror seized the wicked. With terrible distinctness they heard the words, Too late! Too late! Those who had not prized God's word were hurrying to and fro, wandering from sea to sea and from the north to the east to seek the word of the Lord. Said the angel, They shall not find it. There is a famine in the land not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. 
What would they not give for one word of approval from God? But no, they must hunger and thirst on. Day after day have they slighted salvation, prizing earthly riches and earthly pleasure higher than any heavenly treasure or inducement. They have rejected Jesus and despised his saints. The filthy must remain filthy forever. Many of the wicked were greatly enraged as they suffered the effects of the plagues. It was a scene of fearful agony. Parents were bitterly reproaching their children, and children their parents, brothers their sisters, and sisters their brothers. Loud, wailing cries were heard in every direction. It was you who kept me from receiving the truth which would have saved me from this awful hour. The people turned upon their ministers with bitter hate and reproached them, saying, You have not warned us. You told us that all the world was to be converted, and cried, Peace, peace, to quiet every fear that was aroused. You have not told us of this hour, and those who warned us of it you declared to be fanatics and evil men who would ruin us. But I saw that the ministers did not escape the wrath of God. Their suffering was tenfold greater than that of their people.